the best you are his father moments on paternity court. You are the father. Hey! <laughs> Mr. Thomas, you are her father. <laughs> <laughs> Manipulation has gone too far this time for Mr. Milner. He was devastated to find out that his wife made him a fool. The defendant made him believe that he was the father of their son, but some doubts have shaken him hard. And now he wants to prove his paternity. Mr. Milner, you claim the defendant, Ms. Heath, deceived you into believing that you fathered her three month old son, Zakaria Milner Jr. Yes, you say you love her son and would be devastated to find out that you've been loving another man's child, which is why you have petitioned the court to order a paternity test. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Milner stated his persona well, and he called himself a simple man who just wanted to have a family now, and right away told his wish to the defendant. But in his mind, his request wasn't taken seriously, and he quickly got a red alert. Oh, you thought like can use him up. I got I got one that's just I can tell anything to. Man, get away with it, yeah. Your Honor, that wasn't the case. Um, when I met Mr. Milner, yes, he did say he wanted the family. Of course, I wanted the same thing. I have other children, you know. This was not a part of the plan, you know. I didn't I didn't just see Man. him and was like, oh, I got somebody that's well, gonna sit here and, you know, do do the family thing. How can the bell of danger ring so fast? He's exaggerating a bit, but we still accept it. Then the plaintiff said that they met through mutual friends, and suddenly his love bell got him ringing fast, and he jumped to his target to get on this family train quick. You know, I get to talking to him, I get to filling him out a little more, and I felt like he was intelligent, like he wanted something out of life, you know? It's, it's, I had seen something in him that I thought, you know, that we could make something out of this. Okay, were you in a committed relationship, or were you just seeing other people too? No commitment. No, we were, as far as I was concerned, Your Honor, within a couple of days, we were in a relationship, literally. So, he got the girl on his side, and it happened fast, at least according to him. Then the plaintiff said that he was happy with the pregnancy, but that sensor bell rang again, and he doubted the baby's arrival, as it was too soon for him. And he shared a crazy truth revealed by his girlfriend. Sitting uh, we watching TV, her head is in my lap. Me and her is talking real well. Next thing I know, she just bust out the tears. I mean, just go straight to crying. I don't know if the baby yours or not. Ooh, ooh. Not so I'm honor. like... That's not true, Your Honor. First note, he's a good mimic. And secondly, they had some pretty wild adventures, and they're proud of it too. Next, Mr. Milner was very confused about the conception dates and just banged the deck in desperation for answers. He also signed the birth certificate and expressed his crazy love for the kids. I want that family, and I, when I see him, I just, I want, I want a son. I already got two daughters, I want a son. I want that more than anything else. But you have this doubt that just won't go away. It won't. I'm hoping he mine, but like I say, at the end of the day, I don't know. If the mother got that, what am I supposed to do? If the time ain't that enough, what am I supposed to do? Well, at least he admits his mistake during their lovemaking. Next, the conception dates were discussed, and the other possibility fell into those dates. Upon this, the defendant backed herself up, but a heated argument and some shady statements came forward. I used condoms prior to Ms. Mr. Milner. I even contacted that gentleman. You even told me that the condom broke. Sure, you, you told me that condom broke. And made sure. Did you, did you not tell me that the condom broke on your I desk? never said the condom broke. So when did I say that? that? No, I did no, not. Stop. Did she tell you about her relationship with the other man? She told me that sometimes they used condoms and sometimes they did not. So this part of the drama was missing but we can say that no one saw that coming from this lady. Then the judge asked the plaintiff about his decisions to be their son's father, regardless of the outcome. And here, we witnessed a different Mr. Milner. I can't do it, I'm sorry, I mean... Call me what you want to call me, just don't call me late for dinner. I'm gonna be out of there quicker than the Jerry Curl when it get wet, you know what I'm saying? I just, I can't do it. So truly, there's a lot at stake here. Of course, we have been on rocks for a while, so... You know, I can understand him saying that he's not gonna stay because I have to live this every day. It was clear that Mr. Milner wanted the results so badly because he didn't want to stay away from his kids. And also, the defendant wanted to save her relationship with him. So, the envelope was finally opened. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Milner, you are the father. Hey! <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah. Oh, wow. I haven't seen you smile like this, Mr. <laughs> Milner. It feel good, it feel great. Daddy ownership is not on Mr. Thomas's plate, as he won't become a fool this time. Emptying his pockets for the defendant's daughter, under false assumptions today, Mr. Thomas finally gave up his patience and required a DNA test to get his answers for good. You've been petitioning the court system for a DNA test for 15-month-old Hannah Thomas? Yes, Your Honor. Now you've been notified that you will be paying support because you signed the birth certificate but claim it was under false pretenses. Now the court will decide whether there is reasonable cause to grant you you a DNA test today. Mr. Thomas recalled that after their breakup, they were back together, and that's when she told him about the pregnancy. And he believed her. In his mind, his supposed baby should have been five or six weeks. But the doctor's visit opened his eyes to the truth, and he started solving the baby puzzle. She couldn't have been three to five weeks when she first told me, you know? So that means she deliberately lied to me about the Your situation. Honor, I did not lie about how many weeks I was. Yes, I did, did not lie about anything. Yes, she did. I was honest about everything with him. She was correct about that. She was honest with me. Um, what did about, she say? She told me. Oh, yeah, I'm, I, I'm, told I'm, 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 I'm I told you before okay. August. I told you before August. The dates are complicated, and so is their relationship. A break doesn't mean a new start, girl. So the plaintiff revealed that even after doubts, he stayed with her through the birth, but on one condition, that if the other guy wasn't the real father, he would sign the birth certificate. But it didn't happen like that. And I had no problem with that, because I'm not gonna let just someone come in and destroy my family like that, you know? He destroyed his family from the beginning. You had doubts and that's why you're here, because you kept on saying you didn't know if she was yours. And I was honest. You're, I told him that it was a possibility. Your Honor, Rakai's a because, dirty fighter. She's, she's a dirty fighter. We just can't right. fight and I go sleep on the couch and she's in the bed, no. Okay, first you have a possibility, then to add fuel to the fire, you tell Mr. Thomas that he's not the father? How are you ever gonna win his trust? Mr. Thomas said they lost one of their twins, and even at that time, she complained that he didn't grieve much for the baby. And the defendant shared her bitter feelings toward his reaction. Just cause you you saying you didn't do nothing on your break with me, but we were broke up. We wasn't supposed to get back together. What's wrong with that? And I was honest when we did decide we were gonna be back together. After all that, after she was honest with me, I respected that. You, you were honest with right. me, let's get this right. She was still sleeping with this man after Hannah was born. I don't know what to say, but given this situation, both parties seem right in their testimonies. Both made mistakes and hurt each other. So in a way, it's all even. Then the judge asked the defendant about the two weeks ago incident, and she admitted that she told him about it, but Mr. Thomas was ready to attack again. But my three-year-old daughter was like, man, it was somebody over here that wasn't right. I didn't know him. I um, mean, I'm, wow, well, okay. So what's going on, Rakaya? What you told, mean, what's she, going she told, on? She told what do you mean, what's like going on, Your Honor? But she had like, I wasn't with him once again. And she had did some messed up stuff to me. And another like, thing why is, he expect me to the, be the children to referred me, to her as kind of bad. Her cries are on point. When you broke up and didn't want to carry on, then why do you expect fidelity from her? Their arguments had no end. So the judge brought in the plaintiff's witness, Mr. Hill, and he testified some more shocking revelations. One time me and Rakaya was hanging out in the uh, house. They had got into it. He had left to get some air and uh, she had actually showed me pictures. I don't know if she was mad or I don't know if she was in the feelings or something. I had never told him this ever because I just didn't want no parts of it. I didn't want to get into it. But she had shown me pictures of who she really thought was the baby's dad. What? Why would you shoot yourself in the foot? I mean, now it's more your fault than his. Sorry, miss. Then the plaintiff brought another piece of proof and taunted that he finally discovered the baby's father and showed the text's number to expose the games of the defendant. You are admitting that you have a person logged into your contacts as Hannah's no, dad. No, I do not. So this isn't uh, from your phone. Well, I don't know what that document is, so I can't answer that for you. That's have a screenshot of a text you message that's been look, printed out, Your Honor. Are you familiar with the number that's listed here? Your Honor, no, I wear glasses, so I can't see from right there. Next, the plaintiff said that all these things have made him doubt the baby and it's killing him inside. No one in his family knows about his problem, and it's hard for him to bear now. Then the judge asked both of them about their hopes for the outcome of this paternity issue. That's my life, you know, they my life. All I do is work and have them. I have my job and I have them. And if they're gone, like, it's just gonna be my, my, my job. Like, and I mean, that's not enough for me. 
I made mistakes, you know. I never meant to hurt anybody. I'm nervous, I'm scared. I just want him to be her dad, that's it. The mistakes of the defendant and consistent doubts from Mr. Thomas only added more damage to their relationship. But it shouldn't have meant for their daughter because she was innocent in this war. So, without any further ado, the judge opened the envelope. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Thomas, you are her father. Miss <laughs> 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 Jones has dragged her ex to court to prove to him that he fathered her eight-month-old daughter, Hazel. Her claim is stronger than his denial because Mr. Joyner is a devoted military veteran. So besides his service to the country, he also needs to pay attention to their daughter. But help will only be granted if he's proven wrong today. Ms. Jones, you claim the defendant is an ex-boyfriend who got you pregnant and now refuses to do anything for your eight-month-old daughter, Hazel. Yes. You and your mother petitioned the court for a DNA test to prove that he is Hazel's father, so he will finally step up. So, you don't know her name, but you slept with her. And now you're standing here. Come on, dude. At least come up with better lies. So Miss Jones's mother exposed him that she knew about their relationship and even spent time at his house. So his denial is useless. Then the defendant quickly changed the topic. I know for a fact that she was having sexual intercourse with at least two other people from no, our workplace. No, no, no. It wasn't two other people. Once we got serious, I cut all that off. And that was probably like, I give it take a three weeks after that. I cut everybody off to be with him. She was serious with him, Your Honor, very serious. She got herself cleared. Good, now what else? Then Mr. Joyner reverted that they pushed in on himself, but the plaintiff's mother denied it and added that she cooked for him in his house and everything went well, that he even asked Miss Jones to move in with him. But the defendant brushed it off with another story. She was supposed to be moving to Texas in one week. She said, I'm moving to Texas with my boyfriend or baby daddy, whatever it was. So as far as I knew, I knew, I. I in my mind, I was just gonna, you know, do it or do with her for a few days and then she was gonna be gone. But and did I ever sudden, leave? Did I ever leave? Exactly, she never she left. Never no, left. I was committed to you and only you. Every time they try to expose him, he backs himself up like he was dumb and blind all the time. So the plaintiff said that after the pregnancy was revealed, he never called her back. They also argue that she slept around multiple people and she denied it. Then, Mr. Joyner shared why he was only being trapped by them. I have my own place. She see, she seen, I mean, she seen what it, what it was, you know? And she seen my means of, you know, what I had. And then the other guy, she was, you know, guy or two that she was sleeping with at the time. And she chose, and she thought that I would be the best decision. Or we were together. Or we were dating. We were, we're in a were serious dating. relationship. His reasons are quite right. But he also has been a liar before. We've seen that. He holds a respectable job, but doesn't know how to choose his words properly. His statements are very childish to the other party. And here, he talked again, but showed his stupidity more by exposing himself badly. Now, I thank you for your service, I will say that. But if you're responsible, how are you having sex for 11 years and never using protection? Well, how, who's to say I'm irresponsible? Okay, yeah, I could've- I'm telling could've you, you are. For 11 years having sex and you're not that using protection? Mean, I, I don't really? That means that I don't think that means I'm irresponsible. Y you don't? No. A responsible military man, but ignorant and an idiot in real life. And he's proud of it too. It was no use arguing to him more. He wasn't admitting anything. So the judge brought in his mother to testify. And she had something else to say on this matter. They brought her to see me when she was two days old. Um, Olivia, I didn't find out till two weeks before that she was pregnant. I have a grandmother's ring I got in April. It has Hazel's name and birthstone right with the rest of my grandkids. Mm -hmm. I absolutely believe 100% that she is his. And what makes you believe so strongly? As a mother, you just know. You just know, and to me, she looks like him. Yes. So the mother is a firm believer. This adds more trouble for Mr. Joyner. But still, he denied, and his previous experience does make his opinion valid. Then the defendant said that his mother only accepted the baby because she wanted grandchildren. But Mama Joyner had enough and told the judge the reality. Hell no, you're me. not responsible to have a baby. You know I mean? you, my, no. My little, my, no. My little brother, he has two of them and I don't have any. It has nothing to do with that because he ain't got his crap together either. Neither one, I mean, they, they're both young, I get it. 
but they're not responsible, not responsible. Needs to grow up and, and denying it is not going to help. You miss an every day that you don't miss. The statements from the defendant had given everyone a headache. And despite his fears or opinions, the question of paternity was still important so that baby Hazel could have both her parents in her life. And the judge read the results. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Joyner, you are the father. Yes. 